Okay, so as promised, I'm going to show you today a um, gill dissection of a salmon. This is a salmon head. Um, a salmon is an example of a bony fish. Um, and what I've got here is a sort of bony flap. It's a hard flap called the operculum. Now, if you open up the operculum, as I'm about to do here, you expose the gills or the gill cavity. So here, what we can see, these visible structures here, these are filaments. And the filaments originate or protrude from the bony gill arches here. Okay? So the first thing we do when we dissect is we cut open the operculum. So I am going to do that now. I'm not sure if you can hear, but it is quite difficult to cut. One of the key functions of the operculum is to protect the gills, so obviously it makes sense that it's hard like this. So, open it up and what do we find? Well, remember we spoke about the gill plates and how they lined up on, against each other. See how you've got one plate here, another one here, another one here. All of these are covered by these gill filaments which protrude from the bony gill arch in the center. Now, all of these filaments, all of these gill plates contribute to a massive, massive surface area, which of course is one of the adaptations of a um, efficient uh, exchange system to have a large surface area for uh, exchange of gases, namely oxygen, in and carbon dioxide out. So, what we cannot see with the naked eye or without the aid of microscopes are the lamellae. Now the lamellae are microscopic structures on the filaments which further increase the surface area. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut out one of the uh, gill plates for you to look at. Okay, so it almost looks like a brush. Now if I had um, a beaker of water and I put this in the beaker of water you would see that it would expand massively and it would almost look like hair coming out. One of the features of these um, filaments is that they overlap with each other. And the benefit of that is it increases the resistance when water is flowing through. By increasing the resistance, it slows down the rate at which water passes through. That allows more time for um, gaseous exchange to take place in the gills. <laughs> Not only that, but an adapt a further adaptation that we have spoken about is the fact that in bony fish, such as salmon, the blood runs in the opposite direction to water. And that is an example of the countercurrent exchange system. Cartilaginous fish um, have a parallel system by which the blood moves in the same direction as um, the water passing through the gills. Now, fish using that system um, only take up about 50% uh, of the oxygen available in the water, whereas bony fish with this countercurrent exchange system, they take up about 80%. Uh, so it's much more efficient in that sense. Now, the fish must ensure that the um, water always flows in one direction over the gills. Now bony fish have a certain uh, set of adaptations in order to do this, a quite sophisticated system. If you take more primitive um, cart cartilaginous fish, such as sharks and um, rays and things like that, they need to constantly move to ensure that the water enters through the mouth and leaves through the gills in that order. 
Um, and that is an example of ram ventilation. They constantly have to ram their way through water, constantly have to move in order to ensure that the water constantly passes through in one direction. Even while still, even while remaining stagnant, bony fish such as the salmon have a, a certain way in which they can ensure, even when still, that the water passes through um, in one direction. And this is how it occurs. So to take water in, they will open their mouths and the lower part of the mouth, it's sort of soft tissue here, this, this is referred to as the buccal cavity. This lowers, this opens up. So the mouth has opened and the buccal cavity lowers. That increases the volume in the mouth. And remember what we said, when we increase the volume in a space, we decrease the pressure. So the, the pressure in here is lower than it is in the surrounding water. Now this causes water to rush into the mouth, into the mouth. Not only this, but the operculum, remember I mentioned before, the hard covering, uh, covering the gill cavity, valves un in the underlining of the operculum shut. So the mouth opens, the buccal cavity lowers, and the operculum with the opercular valve shuts. Now this causes water to rush in. Not only this, but the opercular cavity, so this part here, the sides of the fish head, they expand slightly. Remember the opercular valves are still closed, but this expands slightly. Again, increasing the um, volume. Now, as this happens, and remember, what I'm describing now is a continuous process. That they've moved, the fish has moved water into the mouth. To move it out, or to move it out past the gills, I should say, it does this. They close their mouths. Now, when they close their mouths, they open the operculum. Now, this closing of the mouth um, and also the opercular cavity or the sides of the opercular cavity move inward again, that decreases the volume. Decreasing the volume increases the pressure in the opercular cavity and that forces water to come out. Not only that, but the buccal cavity, which remember when it's taking water in, it expands, moves down, to force water or to make sure that the water continues to move out of the operculum over the gills, the buccal cavity will move up. So that is why it almost looks as if when you see fish, bony fish swimming, it looks like they're taking gulps of water. It looks like they're taking gulps of water, constantly opening their mouths and closing them. That is, to, that is a continuous process that I have just described of opening the mouth, lowering the buccal, buccal cavity, closing the opercular valve, increasing volume in here so water rushes in, then closing the mouth, buccal cavity coming up, increasing the pressure in the gill cavity, forcing the water over the gills. So that is the fish dissection. You should have made notes on what I discussed. If you have any questions, come and ask me. Thank you very much.